This is really the easiest way to learn 3D for YouTube documentaries, even if you've never opened Blender before, because I'm sure you've seen all these new 3D channels blowing up all over YouTube, and maybe you tried to learn 3D but gave up because it felt too complicated. Don't worry, I did too. But over the past 10 months, I found a way to make cinematic 3D scenes for YouTube using Blender without touching complex stuff like modeling or rigging or sculpting. I also documented everything on this channel, and just by sharing my progress online, I've got reached out by thousands of potential clients through email and Twitter. So in this video, I'll walk you through the entire process, from coming up with an idea to fully rendering your scene, so you can get the same results or even better. But before you come up with an idea, what is Blender? Well, it's a free 3D software that can help you make crazy 3D scenes like the ones you see on the videos made by Fern, Lemino or Imperial. And how to learn it is actually pretty simple. There's actually two tutorials on the internet completely for free and those are the ones that I watch myself. I'm talking about Blender Gurus, Donut Series and CG Fast Track sword series. I watched both while working on a full-time job, not exactly to follow them, but just to understand what can be done with Blender. But those tutorials have two big problems. One is that most of the techniques they teach won't help you exactly with YouTube documentaries. It's more like a general thing. And second, they are almost nine hours combined. That means you will spend nine hours just to get a glimpse of what Blender can do, and you will probably end up still confused by the end of it and unsure on how you can proceed with the actual stuff you want to do. That's why the first lesson of the course I made is a 28 minute video that's hyper specialized on what Blender controllers you will use to make 3 documentaries on YouTube. Also, I included some useful add-ons or plugins you can install right away to make your Blender workflow easier than ever. And you might be wondering what will you do with the rest of the 9 hours? Well, probably watch the rest of the course with follow along scenes that you can then post on your social media to attract clients, just like community member Ganga Edits made on Twitter. I don't know. Just saying. But anyways, let's say you learn how to use Blender. You open it and boom. You don't have any idea of what to create. The possibilities are infinite. But don't worry, I got you covered. You can ask ChatGPT to give you a script using the prompt I'm showing you on screen. Then you can send this script to 11 Labs free plan and you can start practicing for free. But what happens if, even though you have a script from ChatGPT and still you don't know how to come up with a cinematic composition. Well, you have three options. Option one, you can ask ChatGPT to generate you an image. This won't be perfect, but it will give you a starting point to start planning your scene. Option two is looking for reference images. You can make a mood board with a software called PureRef and that will allow you to come up with an interesting idea. You can find these images on Pinterest or Google Images. And finally, option three, if your scene is based on a real location, you can make a mood board on PureRef with images from that specific location. Okay, now that you have your mood board and a clear idea on what to create, your motivation might be sky high, but there's another problem. You don't have any assets, textures, or characters to put in your scene. Most people will stop here, but I believe in you, and I make my best to teach you where you can find all of this without overwhelming you with complex stuff like modeling, sculpting, etc. First, let's find some assets and textures. To do that, I'll show you a small piece from one of the lessons inside my course, where I go all over the websites I personally use to do this. I will play that clip right now so you can follow along. The first one is Sketchfab and you have a lot of models and a lot of them are actually free. You just have to go to Sketchfab and then click here where it says download double <laughs> and yeah basically you can type whatever like a house for example and you have all sorts of models and they are a lot 
that are actually free and I use this website a lot actually obviously most of them are not going to be super high quality but at least they are free but yeah great website you are going to see me actually downloading a lot of assets throughout this course then you have TurboSquid and TurboSquid is normally a website where you can find some of the highest quality assets actually let's look for a house or, or even the, the, the White House. And you'll have models of the White House that are super high quality, but the price is pretty high. And that's the thing with this website. Most prices are super high, but sometimes it makes sense because the models are worth it in terms of quality. Then you have this website that it's called Free 3D Models. And obviously not always it's free, but it's pretty cheap. And it's similar to Sketchfab, but it doesn't have a lot of free things or maybe high quality but free so let's look for a house again and as you can see we have here free 3d models and we have some models but then you can go here to premium 3d models and also look for a house and yeah it's like a midpoint between sketchfab and turbo squid and it's pretty good i purchased some things in the past from here then cg trader is also in the middle it has great models some free some cheap and some expensive but overall also a pretty good website then you have fab.com it's like the new sketchfab but most assets are not actually free but most are pretty cheap so let's look for a house again and you have a pretty cheap and also high quality houses so yeah it's not my favorite but it's actually good and i mean none of these websites are actually perfect but knowing the existence of those websites allows you to choose the right 3d model for your project taking into account obviously uh, your budget how much time do you have your deadline and all those things so yeah let's look at another website then you also have art station basically you have to here to shop and then marketplace then look for 3d models right here and now in this search bar not in this one you have to look for whatever you want so in this case house and here you will find some of the cheapest assets you will ever find in your life <laughs> and they are pretty good there aren't a lot of free assets but they are actually super cheap so yeah pretty good stuff then moving on into <clears throat> the big deal we have kitbash 3d it's essentially where the most expensive things are but a lot of the most popular creators in the 3d documentary space actually use this website i know cypher used this a lot also imperial used this and countless of other creators the thing is each pack here it's 200 dollars but you can also go here to cargo which is like a subscription a lower ticket subscription that you can purchase to actually download as much assets as you want from all the different collections they have so for example we have the personal plan of 40 dollars a month that lets you download 10 new assets per month so it's pretty good the bad thing is that this is not a commercial license and that means that you can use it in pretty much every scenario but if you monetize your channel i think you will have some problems and then you will have to upgrade to this professional version that has unlimited downloads per month and yeah it's the most expensive thing but the pros are using it when you are building scenes you don't just need 3d models you also need 3d textures a texture would be something like wood metal plastic and all those variations it could be like a rusty metal or different types of woods all of that is actually textures so here i'm going to show you some useful websites that you can use to find 3d textures let's start with polygon polygon it's amazing it has lots of different textures and most are paid actually and you can access the majority of them by actually purchasing uh, their subscription which starts at $30 a month but they also have textures that are actually free clicking right here where it says free and they have pretty good uh, textures 
for free and I've used a lot of textures from this website on different edits and as you can see they also have some models that are super high quality so yeah look at all of these um, assets they are all free and they are super high quality so yeah i highly recommend this website we also have polyhaven and here you can search textures and all of the textures here are free as you can see you have all these textures right here that you can use in your projects and yeah they are amazing but my favorite website is this one, 3D Assets 1, it looks pretty ugly, but if you type here something like metal, for example, you will find a lot of textures that are actually free and none of these textures are actually from this website because this website, what it does is it's like a database of every free texture out there from all different websites. So for example, this texture, it's from this website Ambient CG and let's see this texture, it's from Polyhaven and this texture is from another website. And the good thing is that they are all free. So yeah, I love this website. I don't just use this because it's not like a good practice to just use one and only rely on that but yeah it's a pretty good one all right now that you know where to find assets and textures let's talk about where you can find characters this can get tricky depending on the level of detail and the budget you have but the easiest tools to come up with characters are mixamo the make human alone and meta tailor which is a software to dress these characters with custom clothing and if you are just starting please go to Mixamo, download a character in the FBX format and start experimenting. You can always add more complexity later. And if you're thinking those Mixamo characters looking cheap AF, I won't get any results with those, well, think again. BBPR is a channel that completely blew up with just one video using only Mixamo characters so they are more than enough in most cases and finally to animate your characters there's a bunch of ways to do that i teach all of them in my course but to reduce overwhelm i again will recommend you mixamo just go there select a character then go to animations select one and then press the download button now that you know where to find everything you need you might be thinking this is going to cost me a lot and that's partially true. In my community, I like to divide scenes in two categories, minimalist and realistic. Minimalist scenes are simple, fast to make and super affordable. And guess what? You can still get clients and views with this method. For example, community member Flask uploaded a minimalist scene I made for a tutorial and then got hired by a content creator right after. And when it comes to views, just look at Lemino's Kennedy video and that should be all the proof you need. And by the way, 3D pays well. So once you land some clients or get monetized on YouTube, you can always reinvest that money into making more realistic scenes and still be at a net positive. So yeah, at this point, you've got everything. Assets, textures, and you roughly know how to use Blender. So you build your first scene, but it just looks flat and not cinematic at all. I get it, and I used to make that same mistake, but let me tell you, it's all about lighting. Lighting is almost like a complete art form by itself and it can make or break your scene. And the biggest mistake I see with beginners is that they like their scenes with light coming straight from the camera's perspective or sometimes directly above or directly below your subject. And honestly, that's the reason why your scenes look Flat. So here's the tip that changed everything for me. Use light at an angle. Remember, shadows are your friend. They reveal the shape of your subjects and are as important as the light itself. So to drastically improve your scene, use lighting at a 45 degree angle or greater. You can also try from different places like behind your subject or slightly to the side. Or maybe even try using more lights from multiple angles and give them different colors. Let me tell you, this trick will make your scenes 
a thousand times better. But lighting isn't everything. You can have amazing lighting and highly detailed models, but if your clients or viewers don't know where to look and they feel lost on your scene, you are just cooked, my friend. And you need to learn how to frame like Hollywood. I know, sounds like a big deal, but it's actually easier than you think. The only thing you have to do is follow these guides. They are called the rule of thirds and your only job is to position the most important elements on the intersections of these lines or directly at the center. It doesn't get easier than that. Most of your favorite creators have used this technique and you probably didn't notice. Another way to prevent your viewers and clients from feeling lost on your scene it's actually a technique that YouTube thumbnails designers have been using for a long time to come up with clickable images. I mean, when you see a thumbnail that has lots of elements on the screen and lots of things going on, you end up just not understanding it a lot and you skip the video entirely. Well, the same applies to your compositions. If you reduce the amount of focus points your scene has by just two or three, your scene will become trash free and your viewers and clients will have to use less brain power to understand it, which makes your composition a thousand times better. And honestly, at the end of the day, watching a video that requires less brain power to understand, it's always a better experience. And honestly, this is so overlooked. People think that just by knowing Blender, they can get away with shitty compositions, but then they are wondering why they can't land any clients or maintain good retention on a YouTube video. And by the way, compositions are like an everyday thing for me. I'm not an expert, but I've been an editor for eight years and an amateur photographer before that. So most of the feedback that I give to my community members via Loom or screen records are mostly focused on compositions, lighting, framing, and all that stuff. So to wrap it up, most of the time, compositions are more important than spending a lot of money on 3D assets. And my friend, let me congratulate you. Now you hopefully have more confidence to approach Blender to start making your scenes. It's finally time to render your work. You just have to wait 10 years because your potato PC can't handle the animation you just did. Just kidding, <laughs> there are ways to speed up things, but most of the time all of those optimizations just got a couple minutes of the final duration. And honestly you can't have your PC frozen and useless for such a long time, because then you won't be able to meet the deadlines from your clients or your sponsors. So again, I got you covered. The best piece of advice I can give you to render faster is using render farms. And yes, they cost money, but they are 100% worth it. And they are a lot cheaper than you think. But if you don't know, render farms are a network of computers designed to render 3D animations, meaning something that will take around 10 hours to render in your computer might only take 20 minutes with a render farm because it splits the work between many computers. Two of the best render farms that I know are Garage Farm and OctaRender. And let me tell you, OctaRender is way cheaper than Garage Farm, but usually has a couple of issues. Learning how to use a render farm is actually pretty easy. Some apps just explain you how to use them on the onboarding process. And if not, you will always have some YouTube videos or AI now, who knows? However, if you would like me to teach you how to use these render farms for the purpose of this video, which is documentary style 3D animation, I break down the step-by-step -step on the last lesson of my course. And yeah, I know I mentioned my course a lot of times throughout this video. So let me come clean. I have a community called Render Room. It is in the link in the description. It has a course with more than 10 hours of content teaching you everything on this video, but on steroids. I also answer questions every day on the community tab so you can improve faster. And I even share some clients that you can approach once you're confident enough with your skills. For example, I know that community member D uses this feature a lot and so far he's been doing great. And I'm not taking responsibility for that, I just saw the Twitter post and felt happy for him. But yeah, I know he always checks every time I upload like a job 
opportunity. So yeah, if you are serious about learning 3D for YouTube documentaries, Render Room is where you will grow faster, get feedback, and actually finish scenes you are proud of. The link is in the description, hope to see you inside, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.